I was asked how I do the design templates that are in the video before I draw them or they're in one of the corners and most of the time I use a template that I've already made and I just keep reusing them uh, but sometimes I do the coloring design right on the line art so I have four templates I have this one and this one and this one and this one and they're each basically have the same components so I have of course I have the background layer then I have the lines are all on one layer and I have the body be on one layer the hooves are on their own layer the eyes on its own layer and then the hair is on its own layer and I'll do one right now so the way I do it is I just I I wouldn't change the color of the body first so I'm going to use this Lego stack select by color tool click on the body and I'm going to hide those marching units and then I normally start out with a colorize tool so I like buckskins so let's do uh, buttermilk buckskin. Uh, yeah sure okay and then buckskins have dark points so I'm just going to use a paintbrush I'm using my mouse right now I normally don't use my tablet unless I'm doing like swirly lines or something but for basic I just use my mouse so it's just the paintbrush with a faded actual brush and I lowered the opacity and I'll just click a few times that looks about the right color and now I'm going to uh, hold down control and grab the color so that I can have the same exact color on the hind legs just keep clicking until the color doesn't change anymore yeah. very technical alright and then also the muzzle and then the eye and the eye is on top of the body layer so I'm not affecting it alright so if you do control shift a it do selects what you had selected so now I can like color everywhere so now I'm going to do the main and tail so same thing I'm going to select it and so if I hold down my left mouse button you can see what I have selected and I'm going to use the fill tool because it's all going to be the same color. Alright. It's pretty. That was easy. Um, if I wanted to do like a silver dapple, uh, I'll right click, hit U to duplicate the layer, and then change the color of this layer. Oh, that's pretty. And then. I would take the eraser tool, lower the opacity, and get some dark roots. Now, for this one, I have a layer called Forelock Select, and it is just the forelock itself. And the reason why I have this layer is because if I do this, I'm going to get rid of the color on the entire forelock, which is not what I want. So if I use a forelock select, hold down control with this fuzzy select tool and then click on it. It'll take away that part from my selection and now I can just erase the roots without affecting the forelock. If I do control I, I can invert the selection and then erase only the forelock without affecting the roots of the main. 
so pretty handy and then if I feel like I've erased too much I can grab the color and not do that select the forelock and then uh, paint some back on like that all right so let's make this a little complicated and make like a tobiana or something so I'm going to click on the body the select by color tool but I need to increase the threshold to 250 or else I'm only going to select the regions that are the same color as the part I clicked on so if you bring it up to 255 then everything is selected so layer new layer I'm just going to call this you know, Tobiano. Alright, and then what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to not this, there, put on color and then color, colorize. If you decrease the brightness by 5 from pure white and bring the slider into the orange range, it gives a pretty nice color for uh, white marking because you know nothing's actually like stock white it's off white all right so let's do some stuff i like toby on this too so pretty all right yes stocks socks stockings that all right okay yes the Tobiano and well yeah a little snip all right then after I've done like this blobby basic painting on uh, I take the eraser tool with a pretty tiny brush size Come on. and I just erase and I make the uh, I like to add kind of like a rough outline like that a little bit pointiness going on So like this, maybe have a little cut out, and then we'll go back and make that pointy, like that. Maybe add like a little unattached part. All right, let's do the rest of this. What did I do with my brush? There we go. I really don't like that at all. Oh gosh. Oh no. That's better. <laughs> Alright, that's, well, that's good enough for this purpose, the video. Alright, and now, since I do have a little bit on the muzzle, and the hair on the muzzle is not as oops, not as long, uh, so the skin shows through. I'm going to take the lasso free select tool. Sorry, I don't know the names of these tools. Um, and then set the radius to 100, and select the muzzle area because the white part will have pink skin under it. Nope, not that. I'm going to take a color that is almost red. So like that. There, 24. 24 yellow in the red. And take that, 
put the mode of the paintbrush on green merge, lower the opacity down to like three. And then if you click a few times, it gives a nice healthy pink hue uh, to the area. Yes. Okay. So I was going to do something next, which I think is probably going to be the hooves. So click on the hooves layer. I'm just going to do color colorize. And I'm going to do the color for the white hooves first. And it's red. There you go. Something like that. And then I'm just going to select this hoof and change that color to what it should be. It's just something like that. All right. And last but not least is the eyeball. So just color colorize. What the, oh, yeah. Make sure to deselect when you have uh, done working on an area with the control shift A. And brown eye. Yes. yes. Okay. So to finish it off, probably a good idea to change the color of the background to something that fits the color of the coat and works well with it. I don't know, something like that. So that is how I use a template that I've already made to do a design. And they basically have all the same layers. I got fancier and like did layer groups, but it's the same thing. Uh, this has shading on it and it's way too much background. Um, that has shading also, but you can turn the shading off. So, uh, for this one, um, I did the design coloring on the actual line art and I don't show this what I I don't show myself doing it because I can sit there for a long time and play with colors believe me so I just have it already done I just show you in the beginning what my idea was and as you know it changed into a blue horse from purple so this one I have a bunch of layers over here if you look at the layers group um, and it makes this. So I have, okay, I have the white on its own layer. Black is on its own layer. The red, I set everything, no, no, I lied. This is on green merge and this is on addition mode. The white is on addition mode. That's just normal. And this is on green merge mode. And the reason for that is I did the base color I do in gray first. So it's just a gray base black color. And then I used the colorize to change the color. And since I've already gone through the uh, trouble of staying mostly within the lines, I don't want to have to try to do that again. So if you put something on green merge, then it only merges down to what's already there below it. And if there's nothing there below it, then it's not going to show up. So that just keeps it within the lines of what I've already done. If you're sloppy, it's a good idea to do this. And then addition is the same thing. If there's nothing below to add on to, then it just goes away. And on develop black, I could have done uh, darken only. Um, actually, I should have done darken only. Now that I see some things are going away when I do that. So, and then um, the main I just did in black, and then I just highlighted the ends out of it with the dodge burn tool. And I did have to use my tablet for the main and the swirliness. 
because I can't do that with a mouse. Oh, and then the horns are on its own layer. So if you're doing it this way, then you just have to kind of do what you feel layer-wise, you know, what should be on its own layer. Don't be afraid to use layers. You should know by now that I love to use layers. Layers are your friend. They help you keep things organized and from messing each other up. So. That's what I did for this picture. Even though it turned out different. The body color changed and I changed the amount of red markings. But, um. Yeah. And the lines are on its own layer. I have a whole layer group of like 10 layers dedicated to the, the lines. And the reason why the lines, they look kind of bad on this one is because I just, I had drawn this out on uh, paper first. Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, let's look at this. Um, and I just scanned it in and then uh, traced over it. <laughs> well, it looked better on paper because I had to up the contrast to see it. Uh, but, yeah. So I just traced it and then that's why the lines look kind of crappy. Anyway, so that's how I do designs. And uh, if you're wondering how to copy the entire because, you know, if you do control C, you're just going to copy the body layer. If I paste it over here, it's just the body layer. Uh, but if you do control shift C, it copies everything that's visible. And voila. So that's what I do. Uh, if you like doing designs, uh, I suggest making a template of your own. Um, I do these, if I feel like doing line practice, or in this case, uh, s cell shading, then uh, I do a uh, quick little simple template, grayscale, whatever you want to call it. And uh, some people have, uh, if you look on DeviantArt, uh, you can find grayscales that people let you use for free. So. Yes, that's how I do it. If you have any questions about anything that I do, please ask. Uh, you can ask me in the YouTube comments, or you can ask me on DeviantArt, both Vizarin. Thank you for watching, and thank you for liking and commenting on all my videos. A uh, quick note, if you're wondering what the songs are, they're in the video at the end on the in title screen in order so that's where you can find those and uh, I use GIMP 2.8 and uh, I have a Wacom Bamboo fun pen and touch tablet it's about five years old now don't have one of the new fancy ones but uh, no matter oh and uh, I have to use, I'm using Fraps, and I also have to use <laughs> XSplit Broadcaster now, because uh, Fraps doesn't like Windows 8. Most people, most things don't like Windows 8, though. Anyway, so, yes.